Hello everyone, welcome to our learning series of how to use Unreal Engine for architectural visualization. In this video, we're going to learn how to set up an ArcVis character movement inside our project example. Before we start to building up our character movements, we have to make sure that our frame per second is an acceptable rate. So to show our frame per second, we're going to click, we're going to press on Ctrl Shift and H as a shortcut to show the frame per second. So as you can see, our frame rate is a little bit below uh, 10, which is not acceptable and we need to increase this a little bit. To do so, we have to adjust our uh, scene here. But we don't want to change our cinematic level because we, in the future, for example, for any uh, project, you might get any kind of adjustments on the model or uh, in the cinematic, for example, and you might get requested to reduce the same thing again. So to avoid this, we're going to go to File, and before doing this, we have to make sure that you have saved your last step. And go to File, Save Current As. And let's name this as Daytime underscore Optimized. And double click it to make sure that you're inside this level. Now, whatever it is that you're going to do here in this level, like uh, deleting some of the foliage, or uh, rearranging them again will never affect the original uh, daytime cinematic uh, production level okay so we can do this in a different step uh, the step first step is basically uh, that we have to disable some of the elements that we have added to our scene that increase the GPU uh, that decrease the actually sorry the, the GPU performance and uh, as we know, we have added a displacement map to our drive-through uh, floor here in this material. So we can start by dis disabling the displacement that is represented by the tessellation knot in the material. So we're going to go to the, the, mat the parent material and we're going to disconnect the node from the tessellation multiplier and the world displacement. So just to make sure that you go back to the uh, daytime cinematic uh, level, you'll find out that the material is basically have been disabled also, and you can connect them easily back again if you wanna reproduce the cinematic that shows this uh, displacement. So after disabling the desolation or the displacement in our map, you can see that the frames of frame per second have improved a little bit. The second thing we can do is in our foliage uh, planting um, objects. Let's say for example our tree here is was important from a uh, speed tree with a high level of details. If we go to our foliage uh, panel here and we want to check how, how many polygons do we have in this tree. So if I go to the tree folder that we have imported and double click it for example or even if you ho hover over, over it you'll find out that, uh, for example, we have almost 1 million above uh, triangles of this tree. So I already have created a low poly uh, version of this tree and I will also add it uh, as a link in the description below so you can download it. And uh, now the tree have uh, come to a lower value of the polygons. I believe it's coming around 250,000 is okay in our case okay let's see how we can replace the trees without actually uh, repainting them again so we're gonna go to the select uh, panel and right click on our tree and as you can see we have some uh, a selection uh, option here where we can select all of our tree instance and if we go right click again we can find that there is a, a replace uh, option but we cannot find our low poly tree here and that is because we have to create uh, a foliage a static mesh by right click here and go into the foliage and create a static mesh foliage so i'm gonna name this as the low poly tree let's say for example uh, for paint and double click it and we'll find out that uh, the mesh over here low poly and this is our tree let's save and then go back again to our uh, foliage tree and we, if we go to the replace with we'll find our tree so this is basically a very fast step 
to uh, replace our tree and you can already f see that the frame per second have jumped up to above 20 which is uh, really good at this uh, point for our real-time uh, presentation okay uh, this trick can be actually uh, helpful in lots of other ways let's say for example you have uh, a street uh, 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 street lamp or street light uh, lamp that you want to replace with another design you can actually uh, select it with the same way and replace it immediately the third way to, uh, to uh, increase our frame rate uh, frame per second rate is also by uh, activating our GPU visualizer and the shortcut for that is control shift and comma and this will bring up the GPU visualizer uh, panel what we can see here are that our uh, some of our elements in the scene and also the planner reflection is causing the GPU uh, to uh, to I mean it's consuming a lot of the GPU performance uh, for the planner uh, reflection I guess uh, this is something that we need especially in our ArcVis project so this is something we can actually uh, keep it for now and for the scene if we go to our scene and arrange our duration by the maximum for example we can see that the post processing is also consuming uh, some of the GPU power so if we go back to our uh, post process here some of the element that we have uh, adjusted like for example uh, let's say the lens flare for example we don't need this in our real-time presentation and also I believe that we have a bloom effect and this bloom yeah we can actually uh, deactivate it for now and I guess also ambient occlusion is one of the options that consume uh, some of the GPU power okay so if we look at our scene now I guess the frame per second have also improved a little bit we can now start uh, to uh, build up our character movement but before that I would also like to mention a, f uh, a last step to improve your um, uh, frame per rate per second is if you go to the setting and basically to the engine scalability you can find that you can have uh, some of the quality adjustments of your scene available here uh, in the scalability and you can always go to the auto button and uh, press that so it will give you basically the option uh, where you want to have your uh, uh, project to have a higher frame per, uh, rate and you can also adjust it manually as you wish in terms of for example which one which of the option that you can reduce it a little bit okay so this is basically for the uh, optimization of our frame per second and I guess now we can start uh, building up our character movement there are different ways to create a moving character inside our scene. There is the easy way where you can add uh, a ready template, a template from uh, what, I, what we have from the content of the Unreal Engine, like for example the first person uh, template or the third person uh, template, and uh, edit the character and adjust it to fit inside inside our scene. But uh, I would recommend to uh, study how to build up this character movement from scratch. So in case in the future, if you face any problems, even for a, a ready template and you want to fix this problem, you will understand uh, how, where you should go and fix this problem. Okay, so to start, we have to go to the wallet settings and let's go to our uh, content uh, layout. And the wallet setting, our game mode override now is set to none because we have started our uh, template with, uh, with blank, nothing inside it. So the first thing we need to do is right click and create a blueprint class. So in this video we basically gonna also uh, start uh, learning a basic uh, idea of how to set up a blueprint and it's also a good way uh, for all of us to start learning uh, a basic idea of the, uh, how the blueprints actually work. So I'm gonna create a game mode base, I'm gonna call it for example ArcVis. Uh, game mode and I will choose it inside our game mode override here our this game mode and double click it to make sure it's set up and compiled and 
now we need to set up something called the pawn class. This is basically the character that will move inside that we're gonna control to move inside our uh, scene. So we're gonna right click again and choose a blueprint class and to choose which one of our uh, common classes here uh, to set up it as a character basically the actor is a, a blueprint or um, something that you can actually add um, anything inside the scene to interact with let's say for example you want to activate something or you want to activate an animation or something you can use this actor for the movement we have either to use the bound or the character so the difference between them is basically that the bound, if you double click it, you'll find inside the viewport that it still needs to be set up with a, a capsule or anything that will um, set up a collusion with our scene. Where we, if, you, if we choose for example to set up the character and name this for example our Arcvis character. And if we double click it. We'll find out in our viewport that it has a capsule and a direction uh, to uh, show us where we should move. Okay, we'll know more about this uh, in a second now. So, in our default pound class, I'm gonna choose our ArcViz character as it's shown here in our uh, options. Uh, so, we're gonna drag our ArcViz character inside our scene, and this is the basic uh, starting point of. Uh, how to choose which uh, pound to, to set up inside our scene and start editing our uh, character blueprint. Okay, so we're gonna open our full uh, blueprint editor and for the blueprint uh, layout, as you can see, on the left side you can see the components of your blueprints and to uh, know more about this, if you go to the viewport here, you can see that you have a character movement, a mesh represented and uh, inside the capsule and the capsule actually is very helpful to help us uh, simulate the collusion so we don't actually uh, go through wall if, uh, if someone is moving and looking around uh, our project beneath that you'll find that there's the blueprints combo also uh, variables and the graphs and the functions where we can adjust this to set up some of the elements inside the event graph and basically above that the tools where the compile, the pros, the common uh, tools that you use and your edits. The right side is the option of each uh, component you're choosing and finally we have here uh, three panels of the viewport. One of them is the viewport, construction script and the event graph. So obviously we know that the viewport is the components of the blueprint but for the construction graph, uh, script sorry and the event graph they are uh, both of them are uh, layout to uh, start uh, establishing some of the nodes inside your uh, blueprint uh, uh, element but the difference between them is that the construction script is basically an unreal time uh, element so it will not actually uh, be activated when, when you hit the game but uh, for the event graph this is actually a real time uh, blueprint that uh, uh, actually uh, affect your uh, affect your scene in the play time or in the runtime. So let's start by adding uh, some elements or some components to our uh, uh, blueprint archivist character here. So I'm gonna click on add and I'm gonna add something called spring arm and then I'm gonna add a camera. So basically the spring arm is where the camera is going to be attached to when the, ca uh, when the character moves. So I'm going to drag the camera to be attached to the spring arm. So as you can see here, the camera is way be behind the character. And this is, can be actually used if you want to, for example, uh, set up a character inside the capsule. If you, for example, move, uh, choose the mesh, you can actually put a skeletal uh, mesh like we're going to see uh, later on our uh, future uh, courses we can, we can where we can add a character like the mannequin of uh, the unreal engine and set up a basic uh, third person movements but for now we need to attach this uh, camera to be uh, linked to the same uh, capsule position so choosing the spring arm i'm gonna go to the the arm length and put it to zero then i'm gonna choose the camera and adjust its height level uh, let's say for example at 90 so basically this is adjusting uh, the height of the, your uh, vision level uh, inside your scene 
I'm, I'm gonna compile this and go back to our scene and now if we hit play we should see our scene uh, through this camera so if I hit play the first thing we're gonna see is that our character have fallen beneath our uh, object and this is because we don't have actually any collusion set up on this uh, object to, co to have like uh, a collision between these uh, two objects the capsule and uh, let's say the driving uh, through uh, rule so to adjust that we're gonna double click the static mesh of this object and then we're gonna go to the collision complexity over here and choose the, uh, the use complex collusion as simple this is one of the really uh, cool features uh, that Unreal Engine have added to uh, the objects because uh, earlier in its older versions you have to set up the collusion mesh by either model it inside your modeling software or uh, start uh, doing some kind of um, a setup inside uh, the object uh, parameters but for now you basically just gonna get double click the static mesh and then just uh, choose the same uh, option that we have just chosen so if we hit play find now that the character is not uh, falling uh, below our uh, scene so this is step one to set up the cam the character inside our scene so now we need to start to add some movement to our uh, character inside the scene and to do this we have to start set up uh, a basic input movements by going to our uh, project settings and to the input and adding some axis mapping so we can add it also to the character uh, to start moving inside our scene so inside the axis mapping I'm gonna hit this plus sign I'm gonna create uh, four uh, axis mapping name the first one move forward and then we're gonna choose uh, one of the keyboard uh, keys that will uh, simulate the movement forward and as you all know we have we already know that most of our uh, movements have been assigned for the a w s d uh, keys inside our, uh, the keyboard so I'm gonna choose W for move forward and to move backward I'm gonna choose S on the keyboard also because we're doing this on a PC but make sure that uh, the scale parameter of this we're gonna put it as a negative one so uh, basically W as positive to move forward and S to move uh, backward on a negative value and then we're gonna add this as a move right and then we're gonna choose this as D uh, key on the keyboard and add another key here which is gonna be A and put this also as a negative value the next one is gonna be turn we're gonna add just the mouse uh, movements so I'm gonna choose mouse X and the last one is gonna be turn up and it's gonna be mouse why okay so this is really helpful to uh, to get to know that uh, this is a way to s how to set up the movement axis that we're gonna use it later on our blueprint okay so let's go to our character blueprint and we're gonna basically go to the event graph we don't need this currently so we're gonna delete it and to start we're gonna right click and we're gonna write down move forward we're gonna choose it from the axis event that we just created now in our uh, editor project settings and we're gonna also choose move uh, right and we're gonna drag from this arrow to here and let's say add movement input and we're gonna duplicate this here for the move right uh, node here also so the easy way to do this is just select it and control W and it will come at the same location your mouse was there so we have our uh, access input uh, move forward we need now to tell the character which direction it should move then we're gonna connect the access value to the scale value for both of them 
make sure you compile this. Now our character have its uh, move forward and the right and left uh, directions but we need to tell the character which direction it should move. So I'm gonna right click and write down get control rotation and I'm gonna right click on the return value and split struct pin and then get make rotate rotator and connect the yo to the yo direction basically the yo represent uh, the side movements of the um, of the objects if for example if we want to see the difference between them i'm gonna show you this nice image here that shows the difference so the yo represent the movements on the side and the roll uh, the, the rolling of the objects and the pitch represent the movements uh, from up to down and this is actually uh, helping uh, us to understand uh, what is exactly the difference between them when, once we start to edit our uh, blueprints for the mouse for example okay so I'm gonna get from that return value uh, a move forward uh, vector so I'm gonna can you just write forward get move forward vector and connect this to the worldlet direction and we're gonna get also right vector and connect this to our worldlet direction okay so we're gonna now compile let's see if our character now can move forward and backward so we're gonna hit play so you can see if we hit W and S it's moving forward and uh, uh, forward and backward and if you hit D and A you can move to the right and left okay so let's uh, continue editing our uh, mouse uh, movement so we can actually let the character move the head uh, or as it seems uh, and the character movements to see around uh, the scene. So I'm gonna select all of these and hit C to comment this as the movement. And go here to start editing our mouse uh, access point. So I'm gonna right click and choose turn and then go to our access input, turn. And then I'm gonna also uh, get the turn up from the access input that we have created and then we're gonna drag from this call yo movements add control yo input this is where we uh, discuss the, the side movement of the uh, of the character and for this we're gonna need the pitch uh, movements we're gonna connect the access value of both of them then hit compile and go back to our uh, character so let's hit play and now we can see that we can uh, look around but we cannot look up this is I think something we have missed on the project settings so we go back to the input for the access mapping and sorry about that we, we were supposed to put the mouse y axis on a minus value so again sorry about that and another thing I think we have missed also is that if we go to the, our viewport and choose our camera here we should actually activate the use bound control rotation and then if we hit compile again and we hit play we can now see that we can move forward and backward and we can move the mouse to have a basic archivist character movement the only problem now is that the movements of the mouse that represent the, the look up, up and down or right and left is a little bit fast and this could be a little bit disturbing for whoever gonna uh, check your uh, presentation. And there's a way to adjust this by adding these uh, nodes and variation. So I'm gonna add these variables here on the left. I'm gonna write down turn rate. I'm gonna make it as a variable type as a float also create another variable and this is gonna be um, turn up rate and now
now we're gonna go here and add and not uh, called get wallet delta seconds we can also drag the turn rate here and we're gonna drag from our access value multiplication node that is float by float and also add an extra bin here and connect this to the control yaw so connect the turn rate here and the wallet delta seconds copy these and go here control w to duplicate it and also drag the turn rate here and connect these together and connect this also to the pitch input and then basically what we have done is that we have added these two variables to adjust our uh, turn rate so we need to hit compile and then let's start for example by putting a 30 for our turn rate let's see how this is gonna look like compile and hit our chat again to play and now the speed is a little bit still a little bit uh, disturbing so I'm gonna go back put a lower value say for example like um, 8 for both of them and compile and hit play now I think the movement is a little bit better than uh, before so it's not gonna be disturbing for the viewer and maybe we can uh, differentiate between them I mean for the turn up rate we can increase it a little bit let's say it for example at 12 and hit compile and try again yeah I think this is much better now than before but still the movement is a little bit faster so we can also adjust that by going to our character to the viewport and we can go to the character movement and in the search details we're gonna write the speed and as you can see there's a crushed speed and the normal speed we don't need to accelerate our speed so let this put this for example as 175 both of them so let's go back and play now the movement is a little bit better than before and now we are ready to present this uh, as a start presentation uh, for our uh, whoever whoever gonna see this so the next thing you have to do is just keep adding the collusion uh, preset uh, as we have done earlier for this object the road driving object for the whole uh, project so we can move uh, on the whole object and this is basically the character movement that we can set up uh, inside an archivist project uh, I'm sorry to start this from scratch for you but uh, I always recommend to learn things from scratch so in case if you're gonna use a, a ready uh, template in the future and you face any problems at all you can always know where you should go back and adjust uh, the problem or fix it so I hope uh, this was clear enough uh, on our subject and basically in our next video we're gonna start we can continue to build up our uh, interface presentation for this uh, example project so thank you very much and see you in the next video